In today's American English pronunciation lesson, we're going to be talking about eating vowels and what that means for your English rhythm, stress, and linking. Hi, I'm Josh, your American English guide, and this is English Hacks Pronunciation, where I help you to sound like a native if you want and to understand real natural American speech better. So what is this eating vowels? What do I mean? I mean we're just taking a vowel and just... No! Eating vowels is a type of reduction because we know with a reduction we're going to get maybe two sounds blending, maybe a sound disappearing or dropping. So when we're eating a vowel, we're basically dropping the vowel. But how can we do that? Because a syllable is usually based around a vowel. So how can we eat the vowel? Doesn't that just destroy the word? Well, not really. Remember in the last lesson, which is very important for this lesson, so watch that first if you haven't. But last time we saw how you don't just want to make the stressed syllables louder and longer. You also want to make the unstressed syllables shorter and quieter as opposed to sort of neutral okay so we need a big contrast in addition to that we talked about the stress arc or the syllable arc and how that applies to all syllables and we're going to use those ideas that we discussed last time look at a couple examples here so that you can understand what's going on with vowel eating so we're going to take a little piece of a sentence. This actually isn't a whole sentence and that's okay. We live in a time. I bet you thought we were going to talk about going to the beach, huh? Yeah, no, not this time. So we live in a time. Now you are probably expecting as an English learner, you're expecting to hear we live in a, maybe a, cause you're used to that reduction time. And that's perfectly fine. We might say it that way, but more than likely we're going to be eating some vowels here. So instead of saying we, if you don't know, we can actually reduce to we. It can reduce to wa in really fast, messy speech. Or let's just make it simple and eat that vowel. Just drop that vowel completely. We live. We live live. Hmm. So I'm going straight from the W into the L. Now, why is this possible? This is important. Why can we do this? There's a couple reasons. Number one, remember English is stress timed. If you don't know what that means. I talked about that in previous lessons. Number two, we is a pronoun. It's a one syllable function word or grammar word. So it's not content. Okay. It's not going to be stressed unless you have a special reason to stress it here. We don't. So it's going to be short and quiet. Okay. Now you can say we short and quiet, right? We, 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 we live, we live. That's fine. But we actually don't need to say the E part. It's okay if it comes out, but we don't actually have to say it here unless you are super clearly enunciating everything. If you say we live in a time, then yeah, that E is going to have to be there. If your overall speech is slower enunciated for a reason, but in the flow of normal speech and especially fast speech in the flow of normal speech, you can drop the E. Another reason why that works in this particular case is because we know we're going to have a subject there. Right? It's going to be I live, you live, we live, they live, he, she, it lives. Now we know it's not that third person, he, she, it, because then it would be lives. So that automatically can't happen. So we're not going to interpret it as that. Then we have I, you, we, they. Each of these start with a different sound. Even though we drop the E and we, there's no way that somebody is going to misunderstand. It can only be interpreted as we, we live, we live pretty awesome, right? 
We have live, which is stressed. It's a one syllable stressed content word. Bam, louder, longer, we get that arc. We live, we live. So you basically just attach that W to that word and it sort of becomes part of the same word, okay? We live, we live. Then we go to in. Now, if you don't know, in can potentially be reduced to un. It's a little contextual, okay? Both in and on can maybe be reduced to un. So you gotta be a little careful, but potentially in can reduce to un, that's the point here. Or it can maybe even just reduce all the way to n. We can eat that vowel, okay? Drop that vowel. So what if I say, instead of live in, which this would link, right? Live in, live in. The V would link to the vowel, live in. But instead of that, what if I say, live in, live in, v -n, v -n. I'm not moving anything here. I go into the V, live, bring the N up without releasing the V. V, -n, v -n. So that vowel in between just disappears. It's gone. We live in a time. Living, living a, living a. What about that uh, article A? Can we eat that? There are some special cases where things can link in a special way around A and you can maybe make it disappear kinda, but that's part of the grammar, right? There's a diff it would be grammatically incorrect to say we live in time. Well, I guess that wouldn't be grammatically incorrect in this case necessarily, but it wouldn't be saying exactly the same thing. We need the A here. So you can't eat it, okay? We wanna hear that N, N. It's gonna be short and quiet, it's gonna be really small, okay? N. So instead of L, and then the V connects V, and then the N connects N, L, V, N, L, V, N, L, V, N, live in a okay that's how it would normally work if we don't reduce anything too much we don't eat those vowels okay but if we do eat the vowel in in we go straight from the v to the n so now it kind of is part of that word living living livin. so now it's like living 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 so now live has a w in front of it and an n after it and it's all just one word we live in notice that arc living living we live in, we live in. Then that N, remember consonants like to connect to vowels, it'll sound kind of like it breaks off and attaches to that next sound. So that's still gonna happen. We live n, 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 we live n, live n, live n, live n, live n. We live in a time, we live in a time. So hopefully that makes sense. Now we're gonna look at several other examples, but that's the basic idea. So all we're really doing is dropping vowels, but you can see how this can change, this can affect the linking or what gets linked, how sounds flow together, especially consonant to consonant, okay? So we do get some weird, interesting things that can happen. And I wanna give you a special example of how the stress can be really, really important for maintaining understanding while eating vowels. There's the name of a restaurant here in San Diego called Casa Nori. In English, we'd say like Casa Nori. Casa Nori. Now, if I were to clearly say the name of this restaurant, Casa Nori. Nori. So we naturally have a schwa there at the end of Casa. That's just how we say it in English. We could eat that vowel, that schwa there. But be careful. Because if there's not supposed to be any vowel there, kas nori, right, or ka snori, then we'd probably say it something like this, kasnori, kasnori. So that first syllable in this particular case would actually probably not be ka, it would be kus, kus like a schwa or maybe even like an eaten schwa, kasnori, kasnori. And we hear that nor or snore. All we have to do is keep the stress on Kas, keep that sound, the ah sound plus that stress. Kas, we can drop the uh and then go into n or nor, right? Kasnori. Kasnori. So let's go to Kasnori tonight. See? I didn't say let's go to Kasanori. I could say it that way if I choose to, if I make it a little clearer, but I don't have to. I can say let's go to Kasnori. 
It's another good example of eating vowels and how this maintaining the right stress can be very important to be able to eat vowels. Because if you try to eat the vowel as if it's not there, but you don't keep the stress, you're gonna actually change the word, you're gonna break it. And an interesting detail here, I've mentioned before how secondary stress can be important. This is actually one of the reasons, because in casa nori, individually casa, the stress is on the ka. Nori, the stress is on the no, or the nor. But when we put them together, we're not saying casa nori, we're saying casa nori. Because that primary stress is on nor, this is why the secondary stress is still important. You can't just ignore it completely, because if you do ignore it completely and you eat the vowel, as I said, we're going to say like kasnori, and it's not going to be quite right. Example sentences, and I'm going to give you one of them. I'm going to repeat it several times. I want you to analyze and see what's stressed, what's not stressed, and where you think you can maybe eat or drop a vowel sound in that sentence. There might be more than one uh, possibility. The second exercise we're going to do after that is I'm going to take a short little paragraph from an article online and we're just going to kind of go over that and I want you to do the same thing. You're going to kind of try to analyze and see maybe where you can eat some vowels and we're going to walk through that. So the one thing to keep in mind as we start the first exercise here is you want to focus on the smaller words and the smaller syllables and try to figure out what you can do with them. First, clearly enunciated. Did they say anything? Okay, now more natural, more normal. Did they say anything? Did they say anything? Did they say anything? So what can we do here? Well, let's start at the beginning, did. And we're going from a D to a D. It might kind of sound, you can get it really small, just like did. Right? It doesn't have to actually be D, right, fully enunciated. You can reduce it to a really small schwa, but you can't completely eat the vowel there. Why? It's, it's physical mechanics. We're going from a D back into a D. If you eat the vowel and there's nothing in between, it's just one D sound, right? Because the way that D works, you have to release it to produce the sound, and then you have to go back into it to do another D. What about they? Can we completely drop that vowel, the whole A? Can we say the, just the, did the, did the, did the, did the say anything? Did this, did this say anything? Did the say anything? Actually, yes. Yes. Now, this will happen much more frequently in really fast speed speech. Some of this vowel eating stuff will only apply in really fast speech. Okay, where things kind of start breaking. But a lot of it will still apply in normal speed, especially the faster end of normal speed speech. So it doesn't have to be super crazy fast. But you can go from did to th, and then just slide from that th into the s. You don't have to actually go into a. This, 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 this. It's almost like you're saying this, but without a sound be between it. This, this, say, this, say. Did this say? Did this say? Did this say? A say is stressed. Right? Did and they are not. Say is stress. It's a content word. It's one syllable. So we want to hear say, say, anything. So we're doing anything. Secondary stress on thing. Okay, it's a yes or no question. We're going to go up in the intonation at the end. We don't care too much about that here. It's a different topic. Anything. One thing that we'll notice is that between say and any, what you can do, say any, it's very clear separate say any say any there's a small y linking okay that's a basic linking rule say any or especially if you're speaking a little bit faster a little bit lazier say any say any so instead of saying say and then going into eh you can actually just keep the start of say say eh Eh. So you're actually, instead of going eh to i eh for the diphthong a, eh, you can go from e eh to e, eh, which are two sounds, two different sounds. I have lessons on those if you're a little confused. Um, but the start of the diphthong a eh, is a different sound than the sound e, eh, like in bed. Okay. 
point here is that we can go from the start of A into E and say say any. Se, se, se. So again, you can kind of eat that the vowel at the end of the diphthong, cut the diphthong there. And if you try to completely drop the E in any, it'd just be anything, anything, anything. Not really gonna work in normal speed speech. They say anything, anything, anything. You're kind of, you're going too far, you're breaking it. Let's move on to the last exercise. We're gonna go through this very short little paragraph. It's actually just one really long sentence uh, from an article on jamesclear.com. No affiliation with James Clear. He doesn't know who I am. I don't know who he is. I've heard about him before, but this is an article from his website and hopefully he doesn't mind me using this little tiny piece of it. Um, I'll link the article in the description if you wanna read it. This first little paragraph here, it's one long sentence. First, I'll read it, and then we'll kind of briefly go through and see just where we can eat vowels, okay? In 1666, one of the most influential scientists in history was strolling through a garden when he was struck with a flash of creative brilliance that would change the world. Now, don't worry about my intonation there, because it's a little bit of kind of reading intonation. We can still eat lots of vowels here. So, let's see what we're doing. In 16... In 16... In 16 straight from the beginning I don't have to say in and I say and I could just do n, n, n. you start with n. n six n 16 there you go we already ate the very first sound okay we ate the first vowel in the entire sentence in the entire article the very first sound in the entire article not even pronounced there you go one of the most one one the so we can drop the v and of right that's a, a pretty normal thing to do so we're not dropping the vowel there we're dropping the consonant it's okay that can happen too one uh, z most z most z z z z z z i'm doing that th and i can just immediately close my lips into the m nothing between it now if you do the dental d as a replacement tm, tm, Mm. Technically, there's going to be kind of maybe a little something, but you can basically do the same thing and eat the vowel. One of the most. One of the most. You just have to make sure the M is right there when you release that um, TH. Which, by the way, you can also drop the T in most. Most influential. ST at the end, the T can usually drop. So again, we're talking about eating vowels, but there are plenty of times when you can actually drop consonants as well. All kinds of reductions everywhere. Scientists. -n. Scientists. -n. There's something you might not expect. So we have the STS at the end of scientists, and then we have in. And we talked about how with we live in a time, we can maybe reduce in all the way just to the end sound. But I've also talked a little bit in some of the live streams about how there's the SKS, SPS, STS combination. The T is a little bit special, but the main point is that in these combinations, you can potentially kind of do a lazy version of the P, the K, or the T. In the case of the T, you can actually completely drop it. Okay, um, so you can move slightly towards the T. So scientists, see how the S doesn't stop? I don't actually close the T. That's one way to do it. So you can drop the T there, and then you can drop the I and N, and you basically go long S to N. Scientists and scientists and one of the most influential scientists and history now you'll probably start to notice especially if i'm speaking a bit faster it's often in these small grammar words that we can do this again context is important the sounds around them is important but we can still understand just fine if we don't actually pronounce a lot of those vowels okay? this is real english speech now let's go history was now with was it's not stressed we can actually say was 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 if you're speaking quickly enough if you're enunciating wah, we want that uh was but one of the most influential scientists in history was so in history was strolling okay was strolling was z and s same position all i do is drop the voice i'm already in the right position z was 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 strolling makes it a lot easier to speak if you do this 
but you got to get used to it. You got to practice how to do these transitions, right? Okay, that's also where mouth posture comes in. Now, through is a function word, grammar word. It's not stressed. It's a big word, but it's not stressed. Strolling through a garden. Strolling through a garden. So can we do anything here? Through. Through. Okay, we have that R to O. Through. 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 You can kind of reduce that O to like an U. Uh. It's not thra, right? But it's sort of like a really lazy O. Through. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. And then we have the U uh in for the article A. And that's going to continue flowing from that R into like you're going towards that a uh reduction, but it's not quite. And then you go all the way into a uh for a uh garden. Thra. Thra. So it's just one motion. You actually go just all the way through. You don't have to say through. Uh. That's very clearly enunciated. That's fine. Or you can say through a through garden. Now I've talked about before how garden, you can actually say garden, just like mountain. Okay, you can do uh, stop D, get a little nasal plosive in there, garden, garden. So that is straight eating a vowel instead of garden, 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 win. Now when can reduce to win, can maybe reduce to one, uh, uh, okay, super small. Or potentially you can eat that vowel. Yeah, you can do it here too. So was strolling, was, was, was strolling through a garden. Winnie, 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 Winnie. See, I go so fast and you expect to hear win or when that your brain interprets that the vowel is there. But I can go W N E. Okay, not separate. I can't say W N E. That's not right. That has to be a nice good flow. The N has to be there as the W is releasing. So when he was struck, when he was, when he was, when he was, when he was, unstress, unstress, unstress. Eat the vowel and win. Eat the H. I drop the H and he. It's a normal linking rule. Eat the vowel and was. When it was. When it was. When it was. When it was. So actually, we also have in garden, right? We're dropping the in in garden. Garden when he was. Garden when he was struck. Garden when he was struck. Garden when he was struck. Now at any time. Instead of eating the vowel in win, for example, I might say I eh, or even e, eh, more clearly fully enunciated. Um, I might say the H and he. It's possible. It's possible that the full pronunciation or the full enunciation of a word can happen at any time in any word. It can happen. But more likely, statistically, we're going to do these reductions. We're going to be dropping some sounds when we can drop sounds. And so just keep that in mind that I could say when he was struck 10 times, maybe seven or eight of those times, I'll eat all the vowels. Maybe one of those times I only eat two of the vowels, right? And that's fine. Don't worry too much about that because it's a dynamic range. But we're talking about what is possible here. Okay, and you can eat all of those vowels. But hopefully this gives you a much better idea of how natural, real American English speech flows, okay? And why reductions are important, why the stuff that we talked about last time with making the unstressed syllables really, really short and quiet is very important. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Make sure to check out some other great content from English Hacks. Thank you guys so much for watching another English Hacks lesson, and I'll see you in the next one.